Good morning, everybody. It's George, the Antique Nomad. I am at the Mount Dora Antique Show, and wow, there's a lot of cool stuff here. I'm walking through the street of shops. Let's take a look at things that we can find on the way back to my booth. The street of shops is this cool little collective of various antique shops in sheds. These are here permanently, and so these folks can be open year-round here. They're not just here for the extravaganzas, whereas I am just here for the big shows. $29 on this older Swedish enamel cast iron piece seems good because the inside is in good shape, which is often not the case. I don't see any chips. I really see nothing wrong with it. That might be a take home with me. Native American miniatures in ceramics often sell for as much as the big pots. These are, this one's only 10, but the rest of them are all in the $25 range. It is as difficult for them to make as it is to make a larger pot, so it makes a lot of sense. And they don't get as much money for them, so they don't make as many. We have a few different artist signatures on these. I wanted to show this so I could make a correction. I found one of these in the pale green in a video and said I thought it was Jeanette glass because I thought that this shaping at the bottom here was similar to their constellation pattern, but it turns out this is actually Fenton's Valencia line, a few viewers told me. And so I wanted to let you know this is indeed a Fenton piece and a lot of them are not marked because they were done in the 60s. Not all Fenton was marked at that time. I have never seen this version of the West Clock Big Ben with the way down south a very unflattering caricature, but a very valuable clock. This one's priced at 500. I have never seen this in all the years I've been a dealer, even in collections of black Americana. So I have to think that not many people bought these. It says copyright 1938 on the dial. Now, if that just said thrift store prices, I'd have to have that, but that's really cool. They've got a pair of them. They're $250. Must've come from little stores somewhere in the sixties. They've also got a bunch of Coca-Cola racks here. And this cool thing, this is a vacuum cleaner bench. That's why it's all fancy. Yes, there would have been a vacuum cleaner in there originally. People like to buy these and use these just to sit on or put at the end of the bed now, unless they have the vacuum in it. Some people still use them. Neat old drum here with the metal attachments, kind of like a banjo body, actually. That's how you'd be able to take it apart to change the heads and also adjust it. If you can find these cutout sets, these can be several hundred dollars now, depending on the quality and the condition, especially when you get a little older, they're really fun and you just need a little bit of space to display them. This might be the nicest and most unusual oak refrigerator I've ever seen. It is Quaker City Refrigerator from Philadelphia. It's got the stick and ball on the top. It's got East Lake carving. This is going to date to about 1890. It's got a double drawer there for the refrigeration and then this nice shelf unit. So it actually was a nice piece of furniture rather than just a utilitarian little square sitting in the floor. I have never seen one set up like this before. It's very interesting to me. May I ask how much it is? 1200 $1, That is really not a bad price when you consider a good icebox is 600 and this has this unusual feature that we just never see. The centerpiece is where, and then the liner would be in there, yeah. It has directions how to use the refrigerator. Oh, how cool. Here's a fun wall. If you like brass, wow, look at those hanging lamps and around that gilded wood. And here's another really cool brass piece. Wow, this, this is just a really fantastic grouping of items here. They also have some really fun and colorful stuff here, including this. This is Rieger Mittelman, but I love the perspective of the horses coming at you and the way they painted the ground really gives it a lot of motion. It kind of reminds me of the way Leroy Neiman painted sports items in the 1960s and 70s and 80s. Well, these are Italian designer chairs. These are Castelli from Italy. They did a lot of the Lucite chairs and other plastic furniture of that time. And it's really great that they fold because we see a lot of Lucite chairs from Italy from the 70s and 80s and they look great, but they often are scratched because they would be stacked on each other. So to find a set that folds, look at the condition of these. It's really, really clean. I mean, you don't see a lot of surface abrasion at all. They have a nice design. That is a wonderful piece. That is a 1990 vintage Blanco and I think that was a Matt Carter design. That's really beautiful and uh, $75. That seems like a good price. And they have a smaller one that goes with it. I think these prices are good. 35 on the fan base, 
the Blanco pieces with the square label, a lot of these were Matthew Carter. They were done in the 1990s. Um, Hank Adams did some of those designs too. They're just starting to come back along with everything 80s. And so I think this is a great time to be buying because I think those prices are going to go up. In fact, they have a lot of really well-priced pieces. This little Italian swung vase is $15 and it's just a bud vase size, but that's still a really great price. They really do have a lot of fun things here. We see these birds a lot with the metalwork and the wood from about 1970. These are priced at 50 for the pair. And I talk a lot about these Venetian blind style shades for lamps, but here's a pair of wall sconces done that way. You never see the wall sconces. They're priced at 100 a pair. I think that's a really neat look. And I could see it on either side of this lamp with the horse. You've got to just love this lamp. If you like 60s modern, this fiberglass lamp with the spun color over the top of it is really something different. We don't see the shades set up like this very often. And boy, these lamps are so popular now. You've got to ask about this. So I'll tell you what I know about it. Uh huh. I, I Googled all the, the things. And what, it, what this was was from a city um, just southwest of Montreal. And this probably sat in the town square, and these are all attractions. Probably the five streets going oh, from the town square. Oh, so interesting. Not in order, but all these places are in that town, and it's a suburb just southwest of Montreal. And, we uh, thought it was for modeling pantyhose or something yes. like that. Right. At first, I did too, but actually, this is just a really fun way to point your uh, direction, I yes, guess. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that's what it was. Sounds like a fun and dangerous town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> recording George, recording Cat. Yes, exactly. It's so meta. <laughs> uh, yes, a couple of people have come by and said hello. And hello, Dalton. How are you? Good. Good. <laughs> well, my assistant Dalton is here helping. This is son of Nurse Flipper. And uh, Dalton, um, can you point at the calendars under there? See those with the women on them? Those are by somebody named Vargas and Al Moore is the other artist. And these were, yeah, thank you. That's the ones we want to point at. Yep, these were from Esquire magazine back in the 1940s and you had to order them. And then these are pinups and each month they would have another one. And then over here we have the whole Esquire girl calendar from 1947. Yep, Dalton, Dalton's got his finger right on that. There we go. Yes, thank you. He's going to hold it for us so we can take a good picture out in the sun. These are very collectible now. Thank you, Dalton. Fargo was a very good pinup artist, and he had a very interesting history. He came to New York and saw all the pretty women and decided that he wanted to be an illustrator. And he got his wish. And here's some of the old Esquire magazines themselves. These sell for about $40 each now. And they are chock full of interesting things. Old advertising. Here's the 1942 Christmas one. And you have cartoons. And yes, there are pinups, as you see there. The fold out there is still there. It's intact. They have to be intact. If the pinups have been removed, they're not worth the money. Very interesting magazine and a great place to see pictures of things that are now collectible as well as pinups that are collectible. Well, our friends, the glass dealers from Texas have a very, very big piece of Pilgrim glass. This is the Europa Masterworks line in cranberry glass. They had to use 22 karat gold to get this color. They were done in the 1980s. They were supposed to be big and architectural. A lot were sold in New York, so that's a place you see them. Uh, I also see a lot out in Washington State and in Florida. They have a lot of really neat glass, and they've got a bunch of old opalescent from the early 1900s. Swirl Patterns, the Northwood Tokyo, and various other companies. Beads, I think Fenton did the beads. These are all right from about 1910, and I see people starting to get interested in the opalescent glass again. Here's some nice early carnival pieces. I like the peacock and grape in particular. This is Crafty Lion Works. You know how many crowns I have. I Tampa. Have so Interesting. I don't know these folks, but I sure like that lamp. That is really fun. Look at those great colors out of the 50s. Mobile Fabrique are the makers of the table here. That's a Danish modern piece from the 70s. They have a lot of cool stuff in this space. I haven't met these folks before, but they certainly bring a lot. And they've got some cool stuff. I like this decorated cordial set here. Look how many there are, too. You could have quite a party with those. 
And mid-century ashtrays are definitely a hot collector thing now. I think it's the amoeba shapes, these fun colors. Treasure Craft gets a lot of credit for having introduced these swirl glazes, and then everyone else started trying to do their own version. This is Marcia of California, a competitor of theirs. Crazy big orange and white chip and dip set, also California from that era. They do have some really neat pieces here. I like the Viking compotes, of course. Little Rinconata lion here. That's a cute one. You can tell just by the sculpting that it's one of theirs. Uh, this one, the felt has actually covered up the mark, but this is definitely Rinconata from Uruguay. A lot of these are discontinued now and people are catching on. This one's $15. I would say collect them while they're inexpensive because I don't think it'll stay that way. Look at this fun three-piece set. This would be great for a covered patio here in Florida. It's got this interesting combination of the late 60s scroll work that was popularized by Milo Bauman and other designers. And then you have the very squarish lines of mid-century modern. I have not seen this particular set before. And I'm so excited about this space because this is a viewer named Lynn who has not done a show before. And I'm so excited that she's ventured into this. She said she's having a pretty good show. And we're going to take a little poke around her space and see what she has. Hello there. Well, first of all, of course, you know, I always go for the flashy mesh purses. So I'm going to look at this one. It's got the style of a Whiting and Davis, and it is a Whiting and Davis with this thick frame. It's probably a later one. Uh, they are still in business. They've got 75 on that. A bunch of Stangle pottery. I really like these patterns, and they did so many fun patterns, and you can intermix them because they all have this brown band, so they will match together if you want to mix and match. They just did so many different flowers. It's all hand-painted. It was really good quality. Um, they, they definitely were well-made. There's a daffodil pattern some sort of a poinsettia or star flower. Oh, Country Garden. That's right. That's the name of that pattern. I haven't seen some of these patterns in a long time. Oh, yes. See, Alan Johnson. I really like his stuff. $175 is what it was. Yes. People are picking it up, but no one's going to pay that. Because we're in Florida and not Alaska. If I took that up to Washington State, those would sell right away. <laughs> So I'm here with Lynn, and uh, she is a viewer who is doing her first show here. I'm so excited. And we were just talking about the C. Allen Johnson, and this is why I'm the antique nomad, because you, different things sell in different areas. So she's got these really great figures, and they just don't belong in Florida. So we're going to take them back up to the Northwest, oh, and we'll sell them there. You're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That was so fun. you got to have that right person. The people online who are looking for these are probably mainly in England or in the North, Again, where they do more of this sort of tea party and thing. Big, huge, you know. Beautiful light blue. That's yeah. a great piece. No, you're you're you are offering some really nice things at a nice discount, and I think that uh, after I take a few, well, you'll have a few <laughs> less, and I think you'll sell this stuff. It's very good. And then this funky, fun little giraffe is blue sky pottery. The giraffe under the open parasol. I guess they're not really worried about the rain. And the tea light goes in there. I'm like, how is that going to stay in there? Oh, I that's for the tea to... light. Big Sky does these really funky, fun, very elaborate pieces that are hard to put together. They were made in Colorado about, uh, gosh, 25 years ago or so. Definitely collectible now. Here's something I haven't thought to talk about before. If you're a collector and you are coming to an antique show, yeah, they might have an ATM. Some dealers take cards, some dealers don't. Most dealers take checks. I know some of you younger folks have probably never had a checking account, but if you have one, bring your checkbook because it will save you running back and forth to the ATM. And at a big show, the ATM oftentimes empties and then there is no cash available. So come prepared. At a big show, you'll have a food court or at least lots of snacks or something to keep you going. This little cute trailer here is Lynn's Lunchbox now. Oh gosh, I remember Selby shoes. I don't know if they still make those anymore, but some old shoe shop had this, and this vintage sign is $275. Ooh, Buccaneer stamps. That's probably from this area because there's the pirate culture here. I'm guessing that those are aluminum because he's moving it by himself. If those were the old steel cast iron ones from the 19th century, oh, he wouldn't be able to do that. This is a nice piece of Blinko in the 1950s seafoam green, but it is sick. And when I say sick, sick glass refers to things like this chemical, see the iridescence that's come? This is because some sort of something was left in this so long that it actually 
iridized. These were never made with a carnival finish. So that is not correct and it is very, very difficult to get out. So this is a very famous pose in Spelter. Buffalo Bill Cody. And when he was traveling around the country doing his Wild West shows, they sold these figures. So you will see them all over the country. You don't often see them with the original lasso. Uh, usually pieces are missing on these. So it's good to find something that's intact with these. Well, this is an interesting form of art. They're printed and they are mannequin hands. So a little strange in some way. I don't know what it is that feels kind of odd and macabre about these. Now this one is a leaf in water. It's a fairly new form of art, but it's interesting to see. And, you know, they are signed by someone named Cheryl Howell. And we'll see if Cheryl Howell becomes famous. Now here are a couple of cypress lamps. These are things that you see in Florida. You see them elsewhere too, but the cypress knee lamps were always made with a cypress woven shade. So if you don't have the right shade, they don't sell for nearly as much. And the shades have to be in good shape. They were wrapped with leather. That you can repair, but you can't repair splintered pieces. So you really have to look over condition. But this one seems like it's in good shape. And this one is quite stupendous. I've never seen one that tall before. And here we are looking at a really cool ship wheel table from the 1960s. You see a lot of these kind of fun things down in here in Florida. This one is built on top of a lantern. Big old spotlights for $185 each. These look like they were from the movie set. Pilgrim Glass Company did a line called Sea Glass, where they would take these and do satin finish on it so it looked like it had been in the ocean or rolled around in the sea. But they also did these in the regular clear without the satin finish. This one is priced at 65. They were popular in the 1980s because they do look like the big glass floats and are priced less than the big glass floats these days. There's a very nice Dugan piece, the Dugan Pears this carnival glass console bowl from about 1910. Unfortunately, you can see the wear. They probably put a lot of fruit in and eventually took that finish off. So that is something to be aware of when you're looking at old carnival pieces. The finish really needs to be perfect to get top price. And this is a Fenton cranberry glass lamp in the Spanish lace pattern. You don't see these very often with this pattern. It's priced at $3.95. Fenton is very popular again, and I can see why, because we're not seeing a lot of these art glass pieces in this show for sure. This is a name you will find because it's relatively recent, but the pieces look a lot like Davenport China from England from the 19th century. But the label is Matajeta, made in Portugal. Portuguese ceramics really came into the market heavily in our country around 1990. So these are more recent than they look, but they have a good look and they are good quality. The company's actually been in business since 1824, so there are a lot of antique pieces of this out there, but they're mainly in Europe. And this appears to be Sirocco wood, so it's a uh, form composite material advertising Molson beer since 1876. This would have been made for the Canadian market because it has it in French as well as English. Priced at $195. This should date to about 1940. So we are videoing each other. A whole bunch of YouTubers have been here today and um, your Fish Chick Finds, but tell us your real name if yep. you're willing. I'm Colleen from Fish Chick Finds. I'm in the Tampa area. Yes. Yep. So awesome. I'm so glad we're neighbors. And now that I know that, we will have to go run around and maybe do some thrifting or something someday. Yes. yes. <laughs> Cool. I love your area. I like St. Petersburg. Yeah, St. Pete's got the antique store, so come over and we'll go shop. While the party is on, cocktail culture was a big thing in the 50s and 60s, and if you brought your portable records and your disco case with you, then you might have a cocktail out of one of these shakers. There were lots of screen printed shakers done in the 50s and 60s. The oldest ones have the dome tops here. You see that back as uh, early as the late 30s, early 40s actually some of the elegant depression glass companies made and then hazel atlas and other companies did a lot of these in the 50s and 60s some of them were done like this one which i believe is jeanette glass to match other patterns that they were doing a lot were done just with recipes on them Ooh, look a sidecar add one lemon juice to each serving this one is a famous one we see a lot i like the bright colors Sometimes they did them with sets of tumblers. This has the old gray mare, my old Kentucky home. There are glasses that go with, and 
each one of the glasses has one of these themes on it. They did some more as fancy mid-century stuff with the gold. This is a nice example with the Aztec design there. And then later years, you start to see plastic tops. Now they're $1,200 for the pair, but when you see how huge these are, you'll see why these are from a very old fire engine. We're talking something from the 19th century. Look how huge those wheels are. Wouldn't that be fun at the opening of a fine house or a ranch? I just thought those were really neat. The old bakery trick is a really cool thing. This would have been for shipping goods of some sort. What would they have shipped in that though? And then a rope crib. That is really neat. We see rope beds from the mid 1800s, but here is a crib with rope on the bottom. And this is absolutely primitive, all hand hewn. A slave cradle. Oh, interesting. So you would have had to carry the baby with you and keep it out in the field. Wow, what a hard life, but that is fascinating. I've never seen one before. It was all hand pegged. All the joinery is by hand. This is a very, very interesting piece. This is a neat old map. It's really fun to see these when the country is developing and you can see actually Canada is developing too. You have upper and lower Canada at this point, but then you have the Northwest Territory, which ends up becoming Wisconsin and parts of Minnesota and the upper peninsula of Michigan, which was Chippewa country at that time. Virginia and West Virginia are still united. So, you know, this is before the Civil War. Maps like these are really desirable. Uh, people like them for offices, but they also like them for historical research. And it just has a really cool aspect to it. And you can also see it's 1840s because we're starting to see migration into the Western Territory, which ultimately becomes Washington and Oregon. But look at that part that sticks up into what is now British Columbia. That's because we are arguing with England about the boundary at this point. And we are trying to say it should be the 5440 latitude. So we're drawing our maps to show what we want. That's not how it turned out. Well, he's not dressed as Geraldine in this one, but Flip Wilson was very popular in 1970 when this fabric doll came out. They ultimately would do fabric dolls of Ronald McDonald, uh, Red Fox, a whole bunch of other celebrities in that period of time. This one is priced at $25. Ralph Waldo Emerson, they like to quote pithy quotes on bookends in the early 1900s, and this is a great one. Nothing is of any value in books excepting the transcendental and extraordinary. $85, they're Bradley and Hubbard, they have the mark on the back. That's a pretty good price. Bradley and Hubbard always has commanded a premium because they're very well cast, they're very heavy, and they're stylish. We have the Remington 5 on the right, which was an early portable typewriter. Nice in the case for 165 and the Remette, which is a 1942 really portable model, priced at 138. Crates are definitely collectible and it depends partly on the graphics. Lennox soap is from the 1890s or 1900, priced at 95. Distillery is good. Samuels. Dewars. Dewars is a little more common. Ambassador Scotch. More colors are good. Graphics are good. So Clico Club is good because it's got the little Inuit or Eskimo kids on it. Octagon Soap was a popular product in its time. Lake County Bartlett Pears. And here we go. Right for our price on anything you want. Montgomery and Ward. This is very early. This is the stuff that they would use to ship the stuff when they started the mail order catalogs. They were the first mail order catalog. When I was first a dealer, I had one of these Nickelodeon machines, and I made more money off of letting people play with it until I sold it than I actually sold it for. It's a great piece though, midget movies, so five cents each. And you would watch, basically they would flip through photos and you would look in that little visor, and that was your movie, usually lasted about a minute or two. This is neat, it's Tom's peanut dispenser, and nice tall one, circus amusement, that's fun. Stackers are popular anyway, but to have the ones with all the file drawers in it, you never see that. And Oh, that's a desk flip. That's why you've got the solid panel, of course. And then drawers in the bottom. That is a really different one. It is. Wow. Not of Grand Rapids. 
Gun company? Gun manufacturing. Gun manufacturing, Grand Rapids. Yeah. Wow, that's neat. Did you get that up in Michigan? Yeah, and I refinished it, the whole thing. It's beautiful. But how much original leaded glass and everything. How much was uh, that run? I was asking 1800 for it, but maybe they think that's too much, but I think they're worth over. Mm, I think you're in the ballpark because of what it is. It's special to have those extra features. I mean, it makes it absolutely, it's not just a bookcase, it's a desk, it's a filing cabinet, it's, yeah. it's your whole office in a wall, yeah. which was the idea, right? Right. <laughs> Very cool. That's a apothecary cabinet, but uh, it's about 1880. But that's butternut, and it's very similar to walnut, but it's finer grain. Yeah, that's interesting. I want to show it up close because I'm not familiar with butternut. I would have thought walnut without knowing better. And these trees only Minnesota and Wisconsin? Yep. Interesting. Wow, that is really something. And the grain is similar to walnut, so you would yep. really have to study it side by side to yeah, show the difference. Yeah, it's finer grain than walnut. Oh, yes, you can see it in here a little bit. Oh, that's very interesting. Thank you. I, I did not know they made anything out of butternut. Not many. I used to have a beautiful corner cupboard, all one, uh, all uh, butternut and beautiful. Yeah. That's cool. This is neat. It's an old watch display, and it says that it works, so those signs would flip, and they're in kind of a day glow. This is absolutely out of the early 50s, and what a great little design. These old store displays really are popular now if you can find them. And there is the mechanism that shows you how it works. And if you look at the way it's made, it's amazing it still works. This is something that's been made for a long time and it is Royal Dresden, hand painted. The flowers are different on each plate in a service typically. This is a post-war by Schumann priced at $24, but you'll see sets of this that date back to the Victorian era that are priced at a hundred and some dollars per plate. These folks have some very nice pieces in their arrangement as well. I wanted to highlight a few things. Other companies did this style, but Hager tended to have these very crisp handles on their drip glaze. This is going to be from the first half of the 20th century and it's priced at 75. It does not have a Hager mark, so that's a piece where you have to know the form. This crackle decanter is Blanco from the 1960s, priced at 185, and then there's this very interesting Hager vase with this green mottled glaze, and this one is priced at 125. This piece here with this lava light glaze, I bet is West German. Let's see if we can see. Oh, Czechoslovakian, so it's actually earlier than I thought. That's a neat design. If you had a restaurant, you might have had a multi-mixer to make multiple shakes at the same time. And these are definitely more desirable and scarcer because they were in restaurants as opposed to the singles that we see for home use. Their price on this is 500. They can run as high as 650 now. The market has really improved. When I was first involved in this about 20 years ago, you would have seen them for about half that, but they are so popular now. The customer came this weekend and said he worked for Shoney's Big Boy, and in the 70s when they replaced all of these, and they had some that were still new in the box, they offered them to the employees. One employee took one home and all of the rest of them went to the dump. So this is the reason prices have escalated. Now that people want these, they're in much shorter supply. One thing we're seeing less of at this show than we used to is old advertising. And the reason we're seeing less is so much of it has gone into collections that you're just not finding it. Thankfully, we have a few specialized dealers who are still carrying this stuff because there's definitely high demand for it. It's just that it is an era where the demand is outstripping the supply. And that includes these old lifesavers trays. And what's great about these is that they make great display racks. So a lot of antique dealers look for these too. They've also got for the gum over here. So 165 on the lifesaver, 100 on the beach nut, which I have to say is a pretty good price. Uh, they're useful and they're fun for collectors to display with and they're fun for dealers to display with. My friend here who has this piece was explaining that he brought it to the show a few times and sometimes we do this. We bring things to shows if we can't identify them because we hope somebody comes along who can. And someone came along and said, look at the running board of an old fire truck. These were to keep soda ash or other things to neutralize during firefighting. And so that's why, even though it looks nautical with this flange with the holes in it, it is actually an antique fire truck container. He's asking $50 for it. And 
I have to admit, it, it might come home with me for that price just because I'm intrigued. I love finding something I've never seen before. Furniture is definitely worth looking at at this show because there are some really good prices. These are Edward Woodard fiberglass, and I like that there's two different backs on them. Only $175 for the set of four. That's actually a really good price, as is $475 for this set because it has the pedestal armchairs and the table. The tables are almost always in terrible condition or gone because even though they were strong and made of fiberglass, people didn't treat this stuff well. They left it outside, they didn't keep it painted, they didn't keep it undercover, and fiberglass will wear out over time, especially in the Florida climate. <clears throat> they also have the Shays Lounge for $225. But it's not just modernist furniture you can find here at a good deal. This oak cabinet with the mirror in the back, hello everybody, is from about 1900. It's got the nice mirrored section at the top, and it is only $275. Champion fender cover from an old repair garage about 1970 when they would cover up the side of the car so you wouldn't grease everything up, and it is priced at $95. I used to see these more often. A lot of them have gone into collections over the past 10 years. Such a great display here. They always have really cool modernism. I wanted to show off these Lucite bucket chairs with the orange upholstery. Very cool. And aren't these fun? Caspini, Italy. Two side tables and the center table with three levels. 1900 for the set. You don't see this set very often at all. It takes a little bit of space, but it's such a great look. Fun for displaying because you have so many different levels to work with. Now for all the crates we showed you, do watch out for these. This is recently painted on old crates. You can see how thin the paint is. Those are not real. Oh, those are fantastic. You have both globes. Yeah. yeah. That just glows orange. That is so cool. What, where, uh, are they, yeah. are they garden art? Are they bronze? No, they're, they're actually, they're bronze and they're, and they're light lamps. Wow, they are stunning. Look at this. Now, mine aren't nearly as good a shape, but these are from the foundry. Look at that price. Amazing. Wow. $48,000. Cupid holding lamp sculpture set. Fantastic. Who is the designer, I wonder? This it's is something a, very important. It's, um, Metropolitan Galleries. This is really, really neat. And these are Bradley Hubbard. They're actually signed. Really? Yeah. Ah, oh, fantastic. Just beautiful. That is great. I am very excited about these, and I'm glad I got to see them now because I have a feeling they won't make it through the show. And I usually don't get to come and look at your stuff early, so. But uh, Susan said these were worth, yeah. They're amazing. Oh, this is cool. I had one of these once, but not with all the lenses, only the optometrist instrument. Oh, that's so neat. So this is how they would figure out what uh, okay. lenses you needed in your glasses. Fake frames, yeah. yeah, those are fantastic. What a neat set. What does a set like this go for now? Uh, probably 575 Wow. That's really cool to have all of that there. Yeah. Well, we sure had fun with a lot of great guests and YouTubers and viewers and collectors and Mount Dora is just such a great place. If you miss this November show, don't worry because another one will be coming and Extravaganza is set for January 20th, 21st, and 22nd. So get down to Florida and we'll see you here. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.